Hi everyone, it's Leo from Bentamotion. In this video, I'll show you how to make a subscribe button like this. But better. Of course, the project file will be in the description. Let's go. First, let's create the background. Add a solid layer, apply the fill effect, and choose the color you want. Now let's create the button. Add a shape layer, then add a rectangle and a fill. Use the size and roundness settings to adjust the button shape. Apply the fill effect to the button to change its color. Now let's add the text. Adjust its position and size, then apply the fill effect to set the color you want. Let's create the pressed version of the button. Move the time indicator to the moment of the click. Select the box and text layers and press Ctrl Shift D. This will duplicate and split the selected layers. Now let's change the colors of the pressed version of the button and the text. Let's also change the text in the pressed version. Great! Now let's add the click animation. Create a null object and parent all layers to it, except for the background. Move the time indicator one frame before the button press. Select the null object, press S to open the scale property, and add the first keyframe. Then move one frame forward and change the scale to create the button press effect. Now move a few more frames forward and set the scale back to 100%. Great! Now let's add a bounce effect. Copy the expression from the video description. Hold Alt and click the stopwatch icon next to the scale property to paste the expression. You can adjust the expression by changing its parameters, but for our button, the default values work just fine. Awesome! <laughs> Oh, by the way, I almost forgot to mention our new graphics pack. It's built for After Effects and Premiere Pro, and it's loaded with stuff like typography, animated emojis, titles, transitions, backgrounds, and even sound effects. The package is fully compatible with Motion Pro extension, and all the animations are highly customizable and resizable for any aspect ratio. Our license suggests you can use it in unlimited projects with unlimited clients and even commercially. If you're curious, we've got a free demo you can grab to test it out. Check out the links in the description. Okay, let's get back to our tutorial. You can also animate a slight press effect. Just animate the position property for both the text and the shape and apply the same expression to them. It worked, let's move on. Now let's create the button's intro animation. First, parent the text to the shape below it. Then animate the scale property of the shape. And don't forget to apply our favorite expression to the scale property. Awesome, now let's add a small scale animation to the text and apply the bounce expression to it as well. Don't be afraid to move the keyframes to adjust the animation the way you like it. Let's add some color. We'll create a cool color animation for the button. Move the time indicator to the beginning of the pressed button shape layer. Now go to the fill effect and add a keyframe to the color parameter. 
Expand the shape layer's properties, then go to effects, then fill, then color. Now you can see your color animation keyframes. Move four frames forward and change the color to red. Then move four more frames forward and set the color to lavender. Now move seven frames forward and set the color back to the original gray. Then select all keyframes and press F9 to smooth the animation. Let's add some extra movement. We'll create shape elements that pop out when the button is pressed. To do this, create a shape layer and add a polystar and a fill to it. Adjust the position and size of the shape, as well as the polystar settings like points and inner radius. Move the shape layer so it starts right when the button is pressed. Now, duplicate the shape a few times and place the copies where you want them to appear during the press animation. You can tweak the shape settings to add some variety. For example, try changing the points value. Now create another shape, but this time add an ellipse and a fill to it. Adjust the position and scale of the shape, then duplicate it a few times and place the copies in their starting positions. Now let's start animating the shapes. Select all the shapes and press P to open the position property. To reveal an additional property like rotation, hold Shift and press R. Set keyframes at the starting position. Then move about 15 frames forward and place all the shapes in their final animation positions. Also adjust the rotation property to add some spinning to the shape objects. Now select all keyframes and press F9 to smooth the animation. Then open the graph editor and adjust the curve as shown in the video. Zero on the left, 100 on the right. Awesome. Let's add a scale out animation. Select all the shapes and press S. Set keyframes with 100% scale around the middle of the animation and 0% at the end. After that, select all the keyframes and press F9 to smooth them. Then in the graph editor, adjust the curve. 100 on the left, zero on the right. Let's add color animation to the shapes. Select the first shape and apply the fill effect. Move the time indicator to the start of the shape's animation and set a keyframe on the color property. Then expand the fill effect on the timeline and set the starting color. In this case, orange. Now move the time indicator to the end of the shape's animation and set the final color. Don't forget to select both keyframes and press F9 to smooth the animation. Now copy the fill effect by pressing Ctrl C. Keep the time indicator at the start of the animation, then select all the other shapes and press Ctrl V to paste the effect. To make the shapes appear one by one instead of all at once, simply offset their layers on the timeline. Start with the ones on the left, then the ones on the right. It's looking really good, but we just need to add a couple more details. To make it look even better, let's create a line burst animation. Start by creating a new composition. I set the size to 1000 by 1000 pixels. Select the pen tool and draw a line from the center of the composition. Hold shift while drawing to keep the line straight. Set the stroke width to around 70 pixels. Expand the shape layer and add the trim paths modifier. In the trim path settings, set both start and end to 0% and add keyframes. 
Then move about 15 frames forward and set both values to 100%. After that, select the keyframes, press F9, and in the graph editor, adjust the curve. 40 on the left, 100 on the right. Move the end keyframes slightly forward to create a burst effect with the lines. You can customize the animation to your liking. Just move or stretch the keyframes however you want. Add the repeater modifier. Go into its settings and set position to 0, copies to 4, and rotation to 90 degrees. To create a gap between the lines in the center, select the pen tool and move the starting point of the line slightly upward. Done! Go back to the main animation composition and add the line burst we created to the timeline. Adjust the position, scale, and timing of the animation so it starts right when the circle disappears. Copy the already animated fill effect from any shape and paste it onto the line burst. Then adjust the keyframes to speed up the color change animation. Now just duplicate the animation by pressing Ctrl D and adjust the position and timing to match the other circle. Repeat the same steps for the third circle. Awesome, we're almost done. Let's add a glow effect to the button press. It'll make everything look super cool. To do this, just duplicate the pressed version of the button and place it below all layers, but make sure it stays above the background. Add the fast box blur effect and set the blur radius to around 200 to 250. Then expand the fill effect and delete the first and last keyframes leaving only the red and lavender colors. Space the keyframes about 20 to 25 frames apart, as shown in the video, to slow down the color animation. Also move this layer one frame backward on the timeline. The final touch, let's animate the opacity. Select the layer and press T. Set the first keyframe at the beginning of the layer with 0% opacity, then move two frames forward and set it to 100%. Next, move about 20 frames forward and set the opacity back to 0%. And of course, select the keyframes and press F9 to smooth the animation. The animation is complete. Congratulations, you did it. But if you also want to add a press effect, then there's one more step to take. Create another shape layer, then add an ellipse and a fill to it. Use the fill effect to set the color to blue, or just change the shape's color from the top bar. Move the start of the layer to the moment the button is pressed. Then open the scale and opacity properties, set the initial size and transparency, and add keyframes. Then move about 15 frames forward, increase the scale, and set the opacity to 0%. And finally, select the keyframes, press F9, and in the graph editor, adjust the curve. 0 on the left, 100 on the right. All done! If you enjoyed this tutorial, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you next time!